Hi, I'm Councilwoman Katherine Moy, and today is our inaugural program for Katherine Moy's Hometown Heroes. And today we have with us a guest and a great guy around Fairfield, Vince Webster, and he is our fire chief. How are you doing, Vince? I'm good. Good. Thank you. You know, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your time here. I think that's important. You've been here actually for a long time, and you were born here, weren't you? Well, I actually wasn't born here. Okay. We, my family moved to Travis Air Force Base when wow. I was one years old, so okay. almost. I was yeah. nearly. Uh, I was born actually in Maine. Right. So you came here when you were a toddler, or almost a toddler. Yes. Still a baby. And tell me about your time in the department itself. When did you come to work here? Well, I started in Fairfield in 1997, okay. so about 15 years ago. Wow. I came here as a battalion chief. Okay. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, in southern Marin County working as a, a battalion chief in the Sausalito Fire Department. And what was your first job here? You were a battalion chief and you focused on? The paramedic program. Paramedic program. Yes. And, and tell me a little bit about that. What, what do paramedics do in the fire department? Well, paramedics are responsible for responding to medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you take a portion of the emergency room and you bring it out to the patient. Okay. Uh, one of the big things that, that really is important with paramedics is getting to the patient side quickly and in a hurry. Anytime somebody has a medical emergency, the quicker care can be intervened, the higher the chances of their lives being saved. And so the decision back in the 70s, believe it or not, was to try to provide paramedics out of the fire department so that oh. they can get to the scene quick. And that's what we do. You know, we, that's one of the main things that we do here in Fairfield is provide early response paramedic service. And we save lives as a result of it. Yeah, I know. You've saved a lot of lives just since I've been on the council, and, and we appreciate that. Um, I wanted to, uh, you're, how long have you been chief now here in the city? I was uh, promoted, fortunately, to chief in June of 2008. Okay, so right before I came on as a council person, so you've been in there when kind of things have gotten a little bit rough here. Right. Um, today I want to focus a little bit because the focus of my program is going to be on volunteers. And we have a great group of volunteers who work with the fire department, yes, don't we? we? Do. The fire explorers, right? So why don't you tell me first a little bit about um, the city and the fire department and the culture of the fire department and how you guys work as a family. I'll be more than happy to do that. That's something I'm very proud of. The, the fire department, as you know, we work in teams. Um, we have to work multiple hours together. It's not as if we work 40 hours a week and then we go home at the end of the day. Right. Uh, our firefighters work 48, up to 48 hours at a time. Uh, at all of the stations because we have to provide care anytime someone dials 911 whether it's 3 in the morning or 3 in the afternoon we mm -hmm. have to be there to respond and so we're accustomed to being away from home for a certain period of time but also while we're away from home we have to have some of the same amenities that you would have at your home here at the fire department so cooking those types of things and so the firefighters in addition to responding on emergencies and providing the teamwork right. and emergency care and relying on each other for that they also have to stay in the firehouse uh, during that time. Right. And so, you know, our folks range from, we have some really good cooks. Mm -hmm. We have folks that uh, have taken advantage of the time to get their education. We have right. a lot of folks with their higher level degrees. Um, and so it's a family environment because it's, it has to be. It's, right. That's part of our schedule. Right. But during that 24 hour to 48 hour time period, one of the most important things that we're doing is running calls. Someone dials 911, be it for a hazardous materials incident, a structure fire, or a medical aid, we have to be there. And we pride ourselves in trying to be by the patient's side in a medical emergency within seven minutes, at least 90% of the time. Right. And so that means they have to be prepared, they have to get out of the station quick, they have to wake up in the middle of the night and wow. put their brain in gear right. and provide the care that they need to if somebody's having a heart attack or if it's a structure fire. Right. Pretty exciting work. Um, now, you mentioned the issue about teamwork um, yes. and how that works. You know, we, in a, in a structure fire, yes. if a firefighter is going in into a dangerous environment, right. they have to rely on each other for a lot of things, a lot of senses. You know, if the fire is burning, where's the heat of the seat, seat rather, of the fire? Okay. Where's the fire going? Right. And if somebody gets lost, they need to have a partner in there, at least one partner. And they have to stay in communication with each other and with the outside. So. Right. Um, it's a family environment in the non-emergency time, and we rely on each other uh, for teamwork and backup, et cetera, uh, in the emergency environment. Yeah. Um, I know that recently um, you had a couple of firefighters who were burned in a fire, and I saw that family um, 
that family structure when I went into the ER and how much they were there to back each other. Yes. And part of your family are a group of younger folks called yes. the Fire Explorers. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about, tell me what a Fire Explorer is? Be more than happy to do. Uh, fire Explorers are teenagers, mm -hmm. uh, and actually they range in age from 14 to 21. 21 okay. is, is the highest age. The majority of our explorers are between 14 and 18 years of age. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is it's a mentorship program for teenagers. Okay. The idea is to give them training, give them some exposure to what a firefighter does and what an EMT and a paramedic does, mm -hmm. so that if they want to get into that career, then they have a head start. Okay. Um, and so that's, in a nutshell, that's basically what they do. They're junior, in some cases, they call them junior firefighters. Okay. They volunteer their time. Um, and they, they receive the training, the necessary training that they need in order to do the job at that level. And it just helps them, gives them a heads up if they do want to go into the career. Okay. How many uh, fire explorers do you have in the program right now? 26. 26? Yes, we have a lot. We're proud of that. That's <coughs> actually the, the highest um, in the county currently. Wow. So we're really proud of that. And I know that this program, others in other cities look up to the fire explorer program here in Fairfield. What do you think makes it different and it's something that other people look up to or other cities? Well, I have to credit the Explorer Advisors. We okay. have firefighters, full-time paid firefighters. In fact, we have one retired battalion chief wow. who has come back. He volunteers his time mm -hmm. along with his son, who's a firefighter here, to volunteer and work and mentor the Explorers. And so you ask the question, what makes it successful? Yes. They, they make it successful. I'm just, I'm privileged to be able to help and facilitate and support them in any way I can. But they're passionate about what they do. They really are. They're proud. Some of them used to be explorers. So oh. it's, it's a fun program. In fact, they're at the Explorer Academy this week as we talk. Are they? They're in Sonoma County. It's the statewide exploring academy. Wow. And the advisors are there helping out with that as well. So wow. wonderful program. Yeah. They seem really dedicated. Now, the young people who get into the Fire Explorers are also dedicated. Yes. I know I've seen them around at city events. Um, you had a pretty big fire that everybody read about and saw, and it was in the front of a fire magazine. It was out at a plastics factory mm -hmm. out in um, the uh, western part of Fairfield. And can you tell me, I heard that Fire Explorers were out there and helping with traffic and so on. Is that right? Well, what, what we do with the explorers, obviously we have to be careful and there are limitations yes. as to what they can do. Mm -hmm. um, when they first start, you sure. know, their parents have to give their approval for what they're doing. We do not put them in harm's way yes. to the extent that a firefighter would be. So in other words, they're not part of the first responding crew right. that goes into a burning building, things like that. Right. What we have them help out are in areas of what we call logistical needs. Okay. Um, they could help. Uh, the police department primarily does traffic control. Okay. But they can help with barricades, you know, and things of that nature, mm -hmm. and, and they've done that. Where we really use them a lot is in uh, what we call rehabilitation. So in any fire, if you ask any firefighter, you ask what is rehabilitation, they typically, from a firefighter perspective, mm -hmm. it's not the type that you would see in the no normal world. Rehab to a firefighter means... Uh, resting and getting fluid replenishment, getting your blood pressure taken after a fire or during a fire. Okay. As you can imagine, when firefighters are out fighting a fire in the heat of the moment, it takes a toll on your body. You can get dehydrated really quick, et cetera. And so the explorers come in, especially as of late. And on that fire, I remember specifically, we had them set up the rehab station. Oh, okay. They brought in the Gatorade, the water, those kinds of things. And that was a welcome sight for the firefighters. So oh, they yeah. set that up. They provided the nourishment that they needed. That's one thing. The other thing that they do is um, they provide um, uh, rehab and um, also they'll come in and help clean up at the end of fires. We call that overhaul. Okay. So we don't put them in harm's way, but Good. we get them some experience that they need. Good. Okay, we'll take a break right now with that. My name is Abe Batista. I was born and raised here in Fairfield, California. I used to go up and down the street here with my friend Jimmy Hasbrook, and we would uh, sell newspapers. Fairfield means to me family, community, a place of belonging. I've been very fortunate to grow up here in downtown Fairfield and see and, and do a lot of things, and I'd like to raise my grandkids here. Fairfield, California, my city. That's one of the songs we play, La Bamba. And 
Welcome back to the show. We're here with Fire Chief Vince Webster. How you doing, Vince? Good. So, um, it takes a lot of organization to fight fires. And um, I'm wondering, I see the fire explorers out doing a lot of other things in the cities um, and other events that I see around the cities. What else do they do besides uh, help on fire scenes? Well, the explorers are volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so, as such, they're required to do some community service hours. Okay. And when I say community service hours, I, I mean, you know, volunteering to help out with various events. Sure. Um, it helps them in a lot of ways, too. It helps them to become better as... Uh, working towards becoming adults, it gets them more responsibility. There's a lot of things, but specifically they're involved in the July 4th Parade, okay. the Tomato Festival, a lot of our open house events that we do, uh, whether it's through the, the fire department or through the city, uh, Earth Day, we had a table with explorers there, oh, yeah. church events, um, pretty much you name it, they're there. We, we try to get them involved in, in any way we can in the community um, and you know, to show a lot of things. Just, right. But the big deal is mentoring give right. them some responsibility and a sense of belonging. We tell them a lot that it, it helps when they're going into college mm -hmm. to have that on their resume, that they've done a lot of volunteering in their community. Right. So there's no shortage of events for them. Now I've spoken with some fire explorers before at different events and they've told me about um, putting together a resume and those kind of things. Can you tell me a little bit about that and what that's about? Sure, sure. A few years back one of our advisors Again, I want to give them the credit because they're the ones that came up with this idea. Put together a program to help explorers develop resumes. They found mm -hmm. that oftentimes some of the firefighters and some of the folks going into jobs that, you know, folks that used to be sure. explorers then transitioned and decided to go into another whatever field mm -hmm. they want to go into, yeah. they weren't necessarily as prepared as they should be, oh, okay. both from an interviewing standpoint and a resume standpoint. And so the advisors got together, got some training, and de determined well, how can we help these folks to build better resumes. Right. And so part of the explore time in their training is actually geared to let's put together some resumes and let's do some mock interviews. And so they do that. And so they come out of it much better. And lastly, I'll tell you, some of the explorers that have gone on to become full-time paid firefighters, it shows. It's shown in their ability to interview and their resumes are much, much better than they have been in the past. That's just great to hear. You know, you always hear about, oh, you know, kids have such a hard time with this or that. Right. And it's great to have, you know, your folks inside volunteering and doing things and mentors and working with these young people to help them get along better. Now, a lot of them don't go on to firefighting. What other things do they do when they leave the, the well, Fire Explorer program? Fortunately, a good percentage of them, um, 50, maybe a little more, uh, come into the fire service. Wow. And it may not necessarily be here in Fairfield, but okay. maybe somewhere else. Okay. But we had uh, a variety of different occupations. A lot have gone into the military. Hmm. Some have gone on to become police officers. And others just go on to college and go into whatever career, you know, they, their decision may not have been made up at the time that they're in the Explorer Post. But they do know that they want to go on to college. Well. at least a, a good percentage of them. And so they'll go on to college, and as I said earlier, it, it, you know, a lot of the volunteering they're doing, just yes. being part of this program, helps them to get into college. Wow. So a variety of careers. But like I said, police officers, um, uh, folks that have gone into the military, and then just a variety of other jobs. They all sound like great jobs. 50%, you say? 50% yeah, uh, go into the fire service. That's a ballpark number. A ballpark, that's a ballpark but that's, ballpark that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So they got in here and they decided they liked it. Don't they actually stay the night one time? I heard that they stay the night during the program so they can see what it's like to do a 24-hour right. shift. Right, we have uh, two things. They're required to do ride-alongs with the crews. They can't, mm -hmm. they can't spend the night during that time. Right. But but what they do, they you know, that's where they get together with the crew and respond on some of the emergencies so they can see what that part of it's all about. Sure. But also, during the year, we have an, an internal academy where the advisors put on a program, oh. and they bring down some of the parents to help out with the program, and then they'll stay at one of our firehouses during that time. Oh. It's a, just a neat experience for them. That's great. So can you tell me, how can, uh, let's say a young person wants to get into the Fire Explorer program, could you tell me about how they would go about doing that? Sure, sure. There's a couple of, of ways, but the main uh, method is uh, here at our fire station, our administrative fire station, mm -hmm. we have uh, flyers. They can come down to the main station, which is at 1200 Kentucky Street, Okay. and go to the front counter, and there's a stack of flyers there that describe the program. Right. It ex explains what the requirements are, when they meet, etc. 
Uh, speaking of when they meet, they meet on Wednesday evenings at 6 o'clock okay. over at the station over on Union Avenue, uh, 1633 Union. Okay. And they can show up there just to, to observe, just show up, let the late lead advisor know that they're there, and they just mm -hmm. like to observe. Okay. And then after the drill, if the advisor has time, they can sit down and discuss what the program's about. But I really recommend them coming down to the administrative station and getting one of the flyers. Okay. And can you tell me a little bit about the requirements? What are the requirements to well, be a fire explorer? Right. They yeah. have to be uh, enrolled in school. Okay. They have to have a C, maintain a C average in school. Good. Um, and, of course, they can't be in, uh, in you know, serious trouble with sure. the law, things like that. Sure. But those are pretty much it. The city of Fairfield is going through some trying times, like all cities around in this state. Um, we're having to make major cuts, and the fire department has taken some major cuts over the past few years. Can you tell me um, how important it is to have volunteers, the fire explorers, at a time when we're looking at these kind of cuts to your department? In my opinion, it's even more important. Um, I'm thankful that we started out um, kind of entering these bad times with a strong volunteer force, whether yeah. as our reserve firefighters or our explorers. Right. Obviously, they can't take the, the place of a full-time paid firefighter who has, mm -hmm. you know, the training and the, the expertise uh, and the physical training required right. to do the job, but the explorers definitely come in handy when it comes to other logistical types of things. I mentioned to you earlier about the uh, needs that we have on fire, such as rehab and overhaul. You know, for yes. example, when, when we have to clean up a fire after the fire is put out, yeah. instead of, you know, having to rely on a lot of mutual aid, some of the explorers come in and help and they do a, a wonderful job. Wow. Obviously they have to be um, mentored, so to speak, through the sure. process and there has to be advisors there, um, but they help in that fashion. <clears throat> they also help, as I said earlier, when it comes time to uh, rehab firefighters. In the past, sometimes we'll have firefighters actually you know, man the stations right. that provide the drinks and the, you know, the Gatorade and the water and things. Right. Having the explorers come out to do that helps us to be able to put those firefighters that would otherwise be there back online to help That's out. That's great. So, there are several areas, but those are the biggest areas. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me, is there anything else that you want to say about the Fire Explorer program, either the young people who come here and work so hard, or their mentors who do such a great job with them? Well, obviously I'm extremely, I just, just full of gratitude for the folks that put in their time, yes. that volunteer their time for this. Our paid staff, they come back off duty and volunteer their time to mentor these folks. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful to the council and to the city manager for supporting the program. Most of all, I'm grateful to the community for allowing this type of program to exist. And I can tell you, I can tell you firsthand, I know of several explorers that had they not been in this program, who knows where they would be. They would be in probably trouble right now. But programs like this turn folks around and save them. So I'm passionate and grateful. I think that it's a great program all the way around. And uh, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about hometown heroes. These people really are hometown heroes. Hi, my name is Vince Webster. I grew up in Fairfield. I've been here since I was three years old. I really enjoy Fairfield. I'm thankful to live here. I'm proud to say that I'm blessed enough to be the fire chief for this beautiful city. If I could describe Fairfield in one word, it would be diverse. Fairfield has a good mix of people from all walks of life. We're halfway between San Francisco and Sacramento. We're not too far away from the snow. We're not too far away from the beaches. And the reason that I like it is because it's my city. Fairfield, California is my city. Welcome back. I'm Councilwoman Catherine Moy and I'm here today with Kyle Smith at Station 37 with the Fairfield Fire Department. How you doing Kyle? Good, how about yourself? I'm doing pretty well today. It's beautiful out. Yes. Um, we're here today, we're talking about the volunteers who are our fire explorers and um, you know a lot about that because your dad actually started the program. Can you tell me a little bit about why your dad started the program in the first place? Um, I believe he started the program was just to kind of help give back to the community and, and, and get kids involved and give them something to do uh, uh, within the fire department and introduce them to the fire department and, and what it's all about. And that's basically what the Explore program is, is to introduce a young youth into a, a possible career path in the future, you know. And then I was uh, fortunate myself being related to him 
and always wanted to be in the fire department, that it was an opportunity for me to get involved. Um, and I believe I was age uh, 15 or 16, it was 1990s when, when they started the program. And then since then, it's kind of kept my interest and such. And uh, I've gone on to pursue a career in the fire service. And now um, I'm currently working with him. He, he's, he's retired after 32 years, he retired. Wow. And came back and volunteers his time with our Explorer Post now, uh, as well with myself and Captain Tony McCann um, on our off days. All right. So you, you started in the fire service actually in the Fire Explorer program then, is that right? What did you learn? Correct. Um, back then, since it was, uh, it was just the beginning for the, for the, for the Fairfield Fire Department's Explorer post, um, it was just basic things like CPR, first aid, um, we did repelling, we learned about oh. hoses, you know, rolling hose, just um, re real basic. Um, uh -huh. The program has evolved since then. They've had different people over the years volunteer their time and, and take over the program. Um, right before we started running the program, Captain Limios ran it for uh, four to five years. Mm -hmm. You know, and what, what's been great about the program, it's evolved each step of the way to now where um, it's uh, a lot more involved. The kids are getting, uh, uh, I think, um, more, more prepared for the fire service, more prepared for life. We're doing interviews and resume skills, not only just fire skills. So it has grown over the years. That's great. So what do you do now for the fire department? Myself currently, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firefighter paramedic. I'm okay. assigned here to station 37. All right. So um, that's my primary assignment. You know, um, as of course, you know, we, we run our calls and go to medicals and fires and, and, and it, pretty much anything that comes in, we, we respond to. As well as we have uh, uh, projects and programs on the side that we get involved when everybody here at the station um, has a project or a program that they're they're pretty much involved in to, to help keep the fire department running. Okay. Um, and then two, uh, I volunteer as one of the lead advisors for the Explorer Post on Wednesday nights. Right. So, so you volunteer your time. Anybody who works with the fire explorers volunteers. It's all volunteer. Yeah. Nobody nobody gets paid, and um, it, it actually works out really really well. You know, and you you do get. The benefit is, 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 the, is the kids, you know, seeing the kids and such, because they get really excited and, and, and they're, they're like sponges. They just soak up the information. They, they really dig it. So. I've seen you out in the community working and working with the kids and, yes. and doing things um, at different public events and so on. I've seen you right. out there. So it's not just Wednesday night for you. You, you volunteer at uh, all kinds of events and so on as well. Isn't that true? Correct. We, uh, yeah, our drill nights are our Wednesday nights, and that's every Wednesday night. And mm -hmm. We go from about six to nine o'clock at night. Sometimes they're wow. longer, but we do special events, you know, mm -hmm. or what, what we call special events. And um, you know, Relay for Life. We we'll go out and participate in Relay for Life and raise money for Relay for Life. Um, we work with a, um, a church group one time. I believe that's where I saw you one yes. time. Um, you know, helping serve serve the community out there. Um, and just doing doing different ev e events throughout the city. Right. So um, we we'll, we'll try to give back, and that's part of the program is, is teaching the kids to get involved with their community and, and, and give them back and making a positive, positive change. How does that work if somebody uh, wants to join now? Is it in the middle of a program, or how does that work? How, how, how do they catch up, or how are they integrated with the rest of the group? Um, well, basically, every year we have the same training, that, so it, it cycles throughout the year. Okay. So no matter when you come in, you're going to catch that same training again. Okay. You know, um, but if a person is interested, they can um, go on to the Fairfield Fire Department um, uh, website. Website. And they can put an interest card in there, mm -hmm. um, and then two. Uh, there's we also have a Facebook page for Fairfield Fire Explorer. Mm -hmm. um, so you can look on Facebook to find us there. Well, that's or, great. Yeah, or you know, we'll, we'll post pictures and things at events and gives you a little bit more about the program. And then they can also visit a fire station. Come, come down and visit the fire station. We're always happy to talk to people, and we'll, we'll get, you, get the person started. Mm -hmm. you know? And then once they put the interest card in, we, we, we contact them. We encourage them to start coming down to the meetings. They can't participate right. because due to liabilities until we get all the paperwork sure. filed. Um, they, but that leaves them, gives them a chance to, to check out the program, see what they're getting into. Um, once uh, 
then that when our numbers get low enough, we'll, we'll we'll start picking some up. So we have an interview process, and oh. they, for some of them, it's their first interview. And we actually put them through an oral board, and we encourage them to make their make a resume and dress nice, and come in. And we and based on how uh, well they do is how we rank them, you know. Oh, okay. And, and pretty much everybody gets in. The main requirements are ages 15 to 21. At age 21, you 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 age out of the program. Uh huh. You can't have any felonies. Right. And, and if you're um, under uh, age 18 and still in high school, you have to maintain a 2.0 grade point average. Okay. And then um, we have an 80% um, uh, uh, attendance rate. You have to maintain 80% of the meetings. That makes sense. So you talk about drill nights, uh, that's Wednesday nights. W w what do you do on those Wednesday nights? Um, we do various things depending on the month. Uh -huh. um, so January is first aid CPR, so they'll come down, they'll get a first aid card and CPR, they'll go through a training. We'll have, okay. we have C actual CPR instructors that come down. Um, February's hose, so they learn all about hose and construction of hose, how to pull the hose off the fire hydrants. We have, um, uh, we use our reserve fire apparatus. Mm -hmm. um, we have access to those with all the equipment and tools, so we actually run them through um, fire simulations wow. where they're pulling the hose, going inside a structure. You know, we get them to flow water, the, the whole nine yards. Wow. So we, we, you know, we do have ladders, so we, you know, how to throw ladders, climb ladders. Um, ropes, so they do uh, low angle rescues and teach them how to tie knots okay. and things like that. So it it it, it varies, you know, um, throughout the year. But like I said, the the training does re does repeat itself. Yeah. So if they came in on in March, uh, they could just mm -hmm. go a full year, and then they would get all of the training that they need. And yes. what happens um, at the end of the time? Is there a certificate, or what happens? Do they graduate from the program, or how does that work? Um, there's there's no certificate or um, anything like that. They'll get their certificates for their first day in their CPR. Uh -huh. But the Explore Post has been around for, for 38 years, Explore oh. Program. So a lot of chiefs and a lot of fire departments um, know about Explore Post, and they recognize that people who have been in Explore Programs have some sort of education and knowledge and have a good introduction to the fire service. So it does benefit them in that, in that benefit yeah. as well. And then two, what we um, uh, do to help them out as well is, like I said, if, they, if they've been there, we, we have promotional positions that they test for. Okay. So as they go up and rank within our Explorer post, uh -huh. um, they have different assignments and such, so we give them more, more responsibilities. And some of those end up being teaching responsibilities. If you've been in the program three years and you've had the training, the March training for three years in a row, we'll, we'll give the training we'll do the initial instruction mm -hmm. but when it comes time to perform the skills we have the explorers that have been there for a while oversee the other explorers wow that's great that. experience so the, yeah so they're getting supervisory skills as well and then we you know we work with them on leadership and how to how to manage people and things like that so very good well kyle thank you so much for your time today and thank you for volunteering for the city of fairfield sure my pleasure thank you uh -huh.